girlies and guys, it is time to delete the dating apps, okay? And yes, maybe I'm coming from a place of just being a little bit jaded. Yeah, actually, I'm just gonna keep it at that. Yes, I'm coming from a place where I'm a little bit jaded. So I just went on to back-to-back -back treacherous, traumatizing, terrible dates. And um, I I'm gonna take the silver lining. I learned so much. I learned so much. I'm rarely, rarely on dating apps because a lot of times I get recognized on there, which is like just so uncomfy. I think it's funny that people think that that's sort of like a pickup that's gonna work. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm talking to a celebrity. I'm on Bumble. I'm on Bumble. <laughs> First of all, let me tell you why I downloaded Bumble this time. Because I've already decided in my life that I'm done with dating apps, period. I've decided that so many times. I downloaded this app called AppLock that locks you out of your apps. I gotta stop shrugging my shoulders like this. I'm always in a state like this and literally my traps are so crazy. Anyway, so I downloaded this AppLock app so that I could free myself from the stronghold that social media has on my life. You select the app apps that you want to block. So for me, it's like TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. Yes, I still use Facebook. I actually really like Facebook. Don't be my friend on Facebook, actually. X, which is, by the way, <laughs> the worst social media name that you could ever, ever, ever pick. Anyways, I blocked all these apps and almost immediately, I'm, I mean almost immediately, I went and downloaded Bumble because I needed something else to scroll on. So now I'm on a dating app. That's a level of addict that's like, bro, that's like crazy. So now all of a sudden I'm spending so much more time on Bumble probably than I would have on these other apps. Just like swiping, I'm getting all these matches. Everybody that I like is matching with me and it's so validating and I'm feeling so good and excited. So then there's like a couple guys who we really are holding a pretty good conversation. So one guy, I wasn't like super, super attracted to his pictures, but like he was attractive enough that if we really hit it off then you know it'd be like a good match i have a habit bad habit of giving men a chance that i'm not physically attracted to let's talk about that for a minute i just don't want to be shallow in my dating so that was my mindset i have ended up in relationships with men that i'm not attracted to at all and then i kind of force myself to build an attraction and it is possible like you can become attracted to somebody once you get to know them long enough i believe that that physical attraction does mean something it is important like physical chemistry is important and i'm also not even like like a lot of the people that i find attractive i feel like aren't conventionally attractive so my new thing is i have to be physically attracted to you in order to like even give you a shot so anyway i matched with this guy he's like somewhat physically attractive super tall his pictures show that he's super in shape which is important to me i do want somebody that's in shape so yeah he's tall he's like strong like his face is fine but we have a lot in common we have a lot of like the same kind of like moral and values and beliefs and we're just like really hitting it off over text like super super hitting it off and then he asked to video chat and we're like facetiming and we're also really hitting it off over facetime and it was just like a week straight of like really getting along it's like wow like i actually really like this person and i haven't even met them yet and i was like this is a great way to meet people like you should really get to know each other it makes it less awkward when you first meet you already have a foundation of who each other are you're not wasting each other's time wrong if you're spending all this time texting texting and calling and talking to somebody who you've never met in person, you're wasting your time. Because when I met this person in person, it was bad. It was really not good. But before we get there, I want to tell you about the date that I had before that. I liked him too. We had like fun chatting. Crazy to think that I spent a whole week just talking to strangers online. Like, get your stuff together, girly. So I go out on my practice date and it was just so uncomfortable he's acting super weird from the jump and then he eventually finally says like yesterday i actually did end up googling you i had no idea that you were famous and what's a literally he was like it sounded like a line out of a movie so like what's, what's a, a famous, famous girl, girl like you do with, with a schmuck, schmuck like me? me and i was like dude like that's not me at all and he's like i'm so blue collar and i was like that's hot like i don't care i like hard workers so then he does end up like loosening up a little bit 
I would say like a little bit too much because he's just getting so close, super touchy, stroking my arm, like leaning in so much. At one point I left to go to the bathroom and when I came back, I tried to get into my seat and it literally like wouldn't wedge back into this space because he had moved so close. I had to remove the chair and sit in the chair over. He also like called his ex-girlfriend almost immediately an effing B. He called the bartender a B. It was just like, it was all around like not great. Couldn't get out of there fast enough, but we did, you know, have some pasta and french fries, which were like low key bomb. Anyway, he was like, he was fine. And if you're watching this, I'm sorry. But the weirdest part was I found out the next day that it was my brother. So I'm literally traumatized. So the next day I have a date with the guy that was like my first pick. Guy number two, but like first in my mind. I'm excited, dude. Like I literally spent the whole morning like preparing for it. We were gonna do pizza in the park and then get gelato in the park. And it was gonna be a vibe. So he comes and finds me at the park. I'm like sitting on a little bench. It's a really cute park. It was a really nice area. Just generally like looked different. Like his, just kind of his like demeanor was like really different, but I'm immediately just like not attracted at all to be honest it made me a lot less nervous because i was really really nervous to meet this guy we approached the little gelato place and it's closed so i'm like oh dang it's closed and i was like oh maybe we can get coffee so i live in a small town we find like one coffee shop that's open and then we get there and it's closed so i'm like dang like i really wanted coffee he was like yeah i don't want to go home yet against my best judgment i said okay since we can't find a coffee place i'll make you a coffee because i make very good coffee and the reason i felt okay doing that is because we had set like such firm boundaries i really let him know like first of all i'm celibate at no point in our relationship until we're married am i going to have sex with you don't even try it i was like if you try it like i will literally be so upset with you i will cut you out so fast i'm really serious about this and he's like no that's admirable i really respect that what did i just get charged 22.98 for an apple That's weird. I also expressed to him that I am slow to physical contact. I am actually an extremely affectionate person, but it, it does take me a minute sometimes. It's weird, like with some people it's really easy and then with some people it feels very like uncomfortable, which is probably that internal thing, that chemistry that probably should be a red flag for me that's not gonna work out. Cause I have forced relationships before where it was so uncomfortable for me for so long. And then I just kind of like, like grit my teeth and bared it. Cause I, I wanted to see the potential in the person. I've learned so many lessons, except I apparently have it. But yeah, I told him that I didn't know if I'd feel comfortable kissing and just basically like we don't have to kiss on the first date. And I was just like, don't blindside me. Let's let's just talk about it. Read the room. You'll know if I want to kiss you basically. He had actually said, if we do kiss, I'll kiss your cheek first. Take it really slow. Literally, I'll kiss your hand. I'll kiss your cheek. I won't just like go in for like a full-on kiss so then i have the the main lights off i have the lamps around i have candles lit i have some music playing i could see why maybe that was like i don't know like an indicator to him that i might want something um but that's genuinely just what i do when anybody comes over like my dad came over the next night and i did the same thing yeah it's like a cozy environment like soft warm lighting candle a little bit of music playing in the background like it's just i don't know an inviting environment but maybe too inviting because we're chilling on the couch we're talking i'm like mid sentence and he just full on grabs my face and pulls it to his face starts like guppying my face like how 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 teenage boy just like going for it and i'm like kind of in shock so i'm like i guess this is like happening right now i told him hey we discussed this and you crossed a serious boundary and he was like what are you talking about you were definitely giving me the impression you wanted to kiss me while we were texting and like even here and i'm like no like while we were texting i expressed to you that this is how i felt it takes me a while to warm up you are literally the one who said we'll take it really slow that you'd kiss my hand you'd kiss my cheek and then he was just like okay so you really are telling me right now that if I would have just leaned in to kiss your cheek you wouldn't have lost all respect for me and I was like no 
because that's what we talked about. Like, that's what I said I was comfortable with. I told you I wasn't comfortable with this. And then I said, I told you that it'd be okay if we didn't kiss at all and to not expect to kiss at all. And he said, if I would have left here and not tried to kiss you, you would have lost all respect for me. And I was like, no, I would have respected you substantially more because we had set clear boundaries and I would have felt like you were respecting me. So I would have respected you more for respecting me because at this juncture, you did not respect me. He ends up leaving and then he texts me when he gets home. Had a great time. Thank you so much for hanging out. Have a good night. It wasn't that upsetting. I never at any point felt like I was in danger. I just think that he was like really bad with women. I was feeling kind of like grossed out. A little angry but mostly just let down. Such a disappointment. Honestly like as he was at my house I was beginning to grow like a little bit of an attraction to him. It kind of like calmed down a little bit because I feel like when we were first hanging out it was just like so fidgety and anxious. Probably nervous. You know, I get it. That's why I was trying to not judge on that too much. But honestly, I did ignore a lot of red flags too. I should have known, honestly. Like he really wasn't forthcoming about knowing who I was. I was able to kind of write it off as a miscommunication, but I, I think that he could have been more forthcoming for sure. Very sensitive to that because I've literally ended up in relationships with people who pretended like they didn't know who I was and they did. And then I found out later and it was just like very upsetting. Just mostly on the honesty aspect. It's not that I would never date somebody who knows who I am. Kind of hard to avoid that. A lot of people don't care about that. Like, especially if I meet somebody in person who knows who I am. Are you that girl from Vine? Do you want to go on a date? <laughs> anyway, now that my own personal experiences are out of the way, let me tell you what I learned and why I think we should all, literally all of us, girlies and guys, all ages. This is why I believe we should delete our apps. It's not natural. It's a waste of time. It's very consuming. It's so easy for people to lie. It's so easy for people to be dangerous. And people are different in text than they are in person. Case in point, I talked to this guy for a week. I was so into him. Like literally my mind was like, this could be my husband. We have so much in common. We get along so well. He has a good job. He's Christian. The chemistry was just so there over phone. And then we met in person. It just was not there. And I'm just like, wow, I've I been to Deceived. I'm just like, I literally spent a week talking to this person, like checking my phone, being on my phone, like as if we're not on our phones enough. A lot of people are not there for the good intentions. And for the most part, it just gives us this impossible standard. I'm not saying anything like new or unique here, but there's just too many options in general. The smallest thing just kind of makes us be like, nope, next person, swipe, keep swiping. It's too easy to kind of like be talking to and dating way too many people at the same time, showing interest in too many people at the same time. It's people shopping. The same way we are is this crazy consumer society where it's like well this doesn't work anymore so I'm gonna throw it away instead of trying to fix it or there's a newer model so I'm just gonna get it every single year even though they're all the same and like mine still works perfectly the newest headphones the newest video games the newest makeup like how many makeup palettes do you need as I'm like doing my makeup but like no really how many makeup palettes do you need like how many nude eyeshadows do you need how many nude palettes do you need how many different foundations how many different eyeliners how many different mascara how many different everything do you need? And I feel like it's translated into our dating life where it's like, throw it away and get a new one. Talk to as many people as you can, play the field. And it also goes into like hookup culture, which is just absolute poison. Like people are literally, hookup culture is a lie. These dating apps have made it way too easy to engage in hookup culture. We're really just looking at each other as pieces of meat now. You can say all you want, like you're sexually free and you know, men can do it so we can do it too. And that's true. But like, instead of saying men can do it, we can do it too. We should be saying like men stop. Like stop being hoes, like cut it out. Let's stop entertaining these hoes. Respect ourselves and like encourage men to respect themselves. And now I'm gonna pull in, you know, the Christian perspective. I waited all this time to get there, but God has provided love for people for thousands of years without dating apps. Dating apps are like, what, a decade, 15 years old. So many people getting married, happily ever after, having babies. In fact, I'd love to see a study of if people were finding happier marriages without dating apps where it's so easy to just find somebody new like oh you're unhappy with your wife download tinder and delete it before you come home download it again while you're at work delete it when you come home it's just become too easy and if you just like trust god and like wait patiently on him to provide a partner for you when you're ready and pray like genuinely pray about it i have a lot of faith actually that when i'm ready and when the partner that god has ordained for me is ready we will meet there's just so many things that in order to give my 
my best self to somebody, I know that I need to deal with that. And every time I think that I'm ready for a relationship where I'm like, yeah, like two months pass and I'm like, oh wow, I wasn't ready at all. So I'm just, I'm waiting and letting it happen when it happens. It is hard sometimes, especially as women. And I know a lot of women out there can kind of relate to this. It's just this, this pressure of feeling judged. I show up a lot of places alone because I'm a lone wolf. When I downloaded Bumble, I was trying to force it. I was trying to take fate into my own hands. Whereas I know that like, God doesn't need me to download Bumble to find a husband. <laughs> I don't need Bumble. I don't need Tinder. I don't need Hinge. Upward. Coffee meets bagel. The League. Raya. Oh my gosh. Raya's a lie. Raya's like the celebrity one. It's actually pretty easy to get on. Like you just need a recommendation from somebody else who's on Raya and then you can get approved to be on Raya for the most part. So there's actually not a lot of celebrities on there. It's like a lot of people looking for celebrities on there. Anyway, I gotta clean this room. Got a lot done yesterday. I'm building it into a walk-in closet slash makeup room slash over here. I want to put like a sewing machine because I really want to start sewing that's like my next hobby slash adventure Get a little one green shirt like haphazardly hanging yeah let's end this in a little prayer heavenly father thank you so much for being love for teaching us love and for being enough for us we know that you are absolutely enough we don't need anything but you you provide all we need and because you are love we at all times have love. We don't need to seek it from others. That being said, when you created men and women at the beginning of time, you said it is not good for man to be alone and you created men and women to be together. So we know that you do want us to be in happy, healthy relationships, but we also know that you at all times want us to be the best that we can be so that we can thrive in those relationships and be fruitful. And if we just wait patiently on you and trust you and have faith in you, then those things will come to us in due time. So thank you, Lord, for providing patience to to us and for letting us know that we can trust you no matter what and that we'll be given exactly what we're supposed to have in the time we're supposed to have it and nothing that we are not supposed to have. I also pray for protection from any relationship that would be harmful to me and if it is not for me, God, please just keep it so far away from me. I put my entire faith and love and trust into you. I trust your timing. It is so much better than mine and even if I go through this life with nobody, you are enough. Jesus is enough. The presence of the Holy Spirit is enough and I will be nothing but content and happy and joyful with that. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I pray. Amen.